Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Kaga. So, I'm finally getting around to doing a Sharnhorst video. I know, I'm late. I don't care. I've been having enough fun with the regular German battleships and, you know, just generally trying to get my ass up the line because, hey, we need to do that kind of thing around here. Y'all expect content. So, what if, what can I tell you about the Scharnhorst that, well, every other YouTuber hasn't already told you about? So, for me, everyone will tell you about, you know, lackluster performance in terms of the guns, or they'll tell you that while the guns themselves are kind of meek, they're fast firing, they're good stuff like that, it's a fast ship, it's a maneuverable ship, there are other YouTubers who say that your target priorities should change and you should be addressing everything on your flanks first. Okay, I'm not going to go too much further into what every other YouTuber has said, and now I'm going to start talking about what I've seen in the game. And it comes down to the tendency for a lot of people to not try to understand the limit, the strengths of the ship they're using, or they're looking for a easier instant win button. And I see a lot of players, even now, now that the Scharnhorst is a quite well known on the server, is that they use the high explosive ammunition pretty consistently. Well, close inspection of my screen will tell you that, well, <laughs> I don't. And I know why they use it. Is that even on this shot out here that I'm pulling off against this um, Indianapolis, it looks like, the chances of me penetrating that shot scant none. But you know what? I can still do, while I might not be able to penetrate a citadel from here, I'm pretty certain that I can score a few thousand damage and just generally start causing havoc with him in terms of the long game here. And by the long game, I mean throughout his entire stay in the match. And unfortunately, before we can line up that third shot, or the third salvo, he disappears behind that mountain and we need to start evading in general. Now, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't use the high explosive ammunition but generally speaking I don't like using the high explosive in my battleships and it comes down to again maybe it's that third slide in the, the opening to this video that should say it all is a certain matter of pride I mean I will sometimes load the uh, number one key when it comes to dealing with destroyers, sometimes I won't. And it's just a matter of what's in the barrels, you know, other than that. But getting back to the subject of the Sharnhorse AP is that I find that, and I think there was a wonderful image published by Wargaming explaining its penetration power, is that outside of 15 kilometers, people just say it's pointless, just load the HE, and with a near 20 kilometer range, I can kind of understand why you might as well start getting the damage in. But I would say that that depends on your target selection. Are you going for the most hardened targets out at that range? If you are, I don't think it really matters whether you're loading the armor piercing or the high explosive. It's kind of a waste of time because if you're not going for the softer targets, it doesn't matter which ammunition you're firing, you're not gonna do as much damage, period. It's just the way the game works. I mean, yeah, some damage is good, you can have the damage over time from fires, and oh, taste that nice citadel. Ha 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 ha. Taste that one there, Indianapolis. Taste it, taste it good. And this was one of those matches that I really came to understand the true potency of this tier 7 version of the 20 centimeter shells that the Scharnhorst is equipped with. They are 
depending on the cruisers you're looking at, you know, like Japanese cruisers, the, I suppose you could call the early year of the American heavy cruisers, quote unquote, even though there be some of them were purpose built as light cruisers before being upgunned to heavy cruisers. I th would say that your engagement distance with them in terms of reliable citadel penetration is actually out to 12 kilometers. That's a long ways farther than, you know, most people would probably start reliably pulling out their AP at sub 10 kilometers. Well, you just saw video evidence that says that, you know, you can probably pull it out even farther than that. So long as you have a certain amount of understanding of how to aim, what targets will work, and you're generally a very patient and disciplined battleship player because, let's face it, the battleship toolbox includes map awareness, aiming, and discipline. And other than that, no, nope. most people will pull the trigger every chance they get. Well, maybe that isn't the case. Maybe with the Scharnhorst, when you're trying to make use of its armor-piercing ammunition as your primary damage dealer, you have to know when you should shoot at any given target, which are presenting the better surfaces to deal damage to. And as you can see, the broadside of that Scharnhorst, I'm going for that one. It's the easier target to get more shells on, get more damage in. We do a little bit of meh damage to him with one shell breaking up, two ricocheting off, but the other ones that landed on him did some damage and it came out to about three. No. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna say that everyone should be firing their armor piercing with the Sharnhorst. No, 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 no. This is the, this is literally what I would recommend for people who are comfortable with the choices of ammo that they can think about using in the Sharn Wars. And they're perfectly comfortable with sometimes RNG blesses them and other times it takes it away from you. Like that bounce off in Atlanta. Atlantas are made of citadels and yet that one bounced. Well, okay. RNG giveth, RNG taketh. I'm not going to complain too much. Maybe that one will come in play later on and give me some good luck later on. Okay, a little bit different story there. We got some good penetrations on that enemy Sharnhorst. About 6k damage. Now, I suppose you could be making the argument that I could be doing damn better damage over time with some fire. But at the same time, German HE, even if this is Battleship, it's still like... Even a battleship caliber HE on the German bat uh, here, it, the chance of fire on these 28 centimeter shells is not spectacular. I mean, it's meh in that respect. And maybe that's part of the entire German national flavor is that every single ship they have prefers AP at its tier and does wonderful goodness with that. So long as you understand the types of surfaces that you should be aiming for, the types of targets you should be trying to find, you know, Broadside Atlantas! Oh yes, please! Please, bring me more! Bring me more! RNG, why you only give me 3400? Because RNG giveth and taketh. And that's... And it doesn't really matter whether or not you're using armor piercing or HE in this respect. You're always using the random number generator to determine whether or not something does anything to you. Because even with that one, which was, he was well angled against that shot, it still found his citadel. So, I would never count it out of the possibility that, and as you saw, that was like about 11 kilometers when the, of a point of engagement. And it was still at an odd angle and it still found its way into the citadel. Yes, I know the Atlanta is a weakly armored cruiser. It, I know, but it's also, a, has a similar armoring scheme to the Pensacola, the Indianapolis, the New Orleans to some respect, the Alba, the 
the Fudotaka, the Miyoko, are, these are all fairly fragile ones. I think the Mogami is actually a little bit more reflective in this respect. But, man, that's a personal opinion. I love those ships, and that's still my opinion. Now, I'm not gonna say that, oh yeah, go ahead, spam EP. This is the, the path of winners. No. The path of winners is literally whatever it takes for you to get into the winners sector of the team list, right? This is just showing you that, yes, it can be used. And some of the situations that it is effective in. This is not necessarily limited to the situations you're seeing. I've had great success using these um, even in tier 9 matches. And yeah, it's a thing. And... Also, don't be that person in the Sharon Horse that neglects the fact they have torpedoes in order to get more armor piercing off. Because if you have the opportunity to finish someone off quickly and efficiently, like with a torpedo, why wouldn't you do that? It's a way to keep your survivability intact for other engagements. Bam! Free 30,000 damage. I took maybe a few thousand from his secondaries. I, uh, that's a great trade. But anyway, this is just one of those, you have to go with what you're comfortable with and you're going to see me load some high explosive here. And that's because I've spotted an enemy destroyer coming up and out of habit, that kind of is just what you do. Although I've had I've actually had better luck using the armor piercing in this to deal with destroyers than I have the uh, high explosive. Because for whatever reason, 28 centimeter just gets eaten up by things like gun turrets and engines, and it just doesn't do enough damage to the ship. This was a very, very rare occurrence where it did exactly as it was built. But, eh, that's my experience. Again, this is all my experience here, and I'm gonna just go ahead because I forgot to uh, unload the um, a high explosive for the armor piercing. Put that into that looks like a Koenig up there. We got a fire, but no other damage. Yes, it's gonna keep ticking away. Although it looks like he already had his uh, repair going, so we didn't get much of any damage for it. And that's one of the fatal. It can be fatal. Uh, downsides of using the high explosive, and as you can see, bam, instant, 7,500 damage. Nothing he can do about it. Nothing. It's gone. If his repair, aka heal, is not going to instantly ta start taking care of that, it's gone. And he's going to get torped. Well, I guess it wouldn't have mattered anyway. <laughs> Maybe we'll meet him in the next battle. And that's just one of those things where I really, and I mean really and truly, for me, the armor piercing is the superior ammunition to use in the Sharon Horse. Now, your mileage may vary as your battles may vary. That's all, that's all you. But I just wanted to show you guys that the armor piercing is viable so long as you're going for superstructure hits, um, main body belt hits, secondary belt hits. Um, so long as you know the ranges that each of these will work. Alternatively, you can also start uh, punching through the front armor decks, uh, not armored decks, but the armored area, belted areas near the foc'sle because those are never as strongly armored as the sides of the flanks near the actual fighting compartments of these ships. After all, the forecastle is pretty much just a storage area. No need to armor it that heavily. Although, historically speaking, there have been a few battleships where they should have armored that area a little bit more, aka the Bismarck, but I'll leave you on a history lesson for that later. And as you can see, the majority of our shell damage was from armor piercing, 
with only about 4,000 coming from High Explosive, Alnet Destroyer. And even with the torpedo hit we had, which was actually only 23,000 and not 30,000, most of our damage has actually been extracted from the use of the armor piercing. This is why I think it is completely viable, and it is highly recommended that people try it. Now, I don't remember firm statistics, but for me, I'm pretty certain that most AP shells in the game will travel at either the same speed as the high explosive, or they will travel at faster velocities. Now, this is more to do with sectional density and other things, but they also have slightly better ballistic arcs. That means it's easier to lead with, it's just better performing in my mind. And in that note, it's about time to start wrapping this up. So it has become custom on the last few videos. Please look forward for the um, Google Plus feedback thread. It will be posted in the comment section down below by me. And please let me know what you think. Um, also welcome our suggestions in that. Do you have suggestions for future content? Please head on over to the Google Plus page or let me know in the comment section, Facebook, Twitter, you know, all the good stuff. You can find the links to these things in the video description. Please do let me know. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. So I hope you had a enjoyable time watching this video. I hope you see the light of the Sharnhorst armor piercing and, well, I hope to see you around and look forward to upcoming content on the channel. So thank you and I bid you a good day.